Sorry. Are ladies okay with that? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, I believe that there were five major things that influenced my decision growing up as a Protestant Christian to join the faith of Islam. Okay? The number one most important thing we covered in the workshop before, which is that I realized I had amazing commonalities with Muslims. Okay? We already mentioned that, for example, since I grew up as a Christian, there's a very beautiful statement from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said, anyone who says the Islamic statement of faith, right, I bear witness that the God of Abraham is the only true God and that Muhammad is his final prophet or messenger, but then adds to that that Jesus, the son of Mary, very interesting the Quran calls him the son of Mary. I think the reason for that is because... It's trying to distinguish which Jesus we're talking about. The only Jesus ever to have a mother named Mary, and he was born a virgin to her. Right? So that Jesus is the Messiah. So to testify that he is the Messiah, right? That he is the Word of God. That he is the Spirit of God. Right? And, of course, he's the son of the Virgin Mary. And that paradise and real are both true and factual. The prophet said, whoever says this will enter paradise through any gate they wish, even though their deeds may be few. Whoa, that blew my mind. I was like, hold on a second, I thought Christians were the only people who believe this. But no, it's an article of faith in our religion, and of course I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. So that first thing of finding these massive commonalities, Muslims worship the God of Abraham, it says it so clearly in the Bible over and over and over about worshiping the God of Abraham, and here with these Muslims, you know, worship the God of Abraham, but they also believe in it and respect and love Jesus Christ, and they don't believe they'll ever go to paradise without having that in their heart. Very interesting. The second thing, okay, that I had, I found so fascinating and interesting to me was that, of course, Muslims are claiming that Muhammad is a messenger of God, okay? So here we'll get into the workshop portion, okay? If I came to you today and I said, I am a messenger of God, that is a pretty tall claim, right? How many really conclusions can you come to from a statement like that? Okay, I've broken it down into basically four. If you're a religious person, you might say this person is possessed by a demon. They've been playing around with black magic, this is the result. If you're not a religious person, then you're going to say, well, this person is crazy. They are delusional. They are suffering from mental illness. And if they're sane, then they're lying to me. Because they have some special, egotistical thing that they really are after, and it's not that they're really a messenger of God. Or, they are a messenger of God, but I still want to see some proof, right? That's important. That's a tall claim. So, when it came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I understand why most people come to these conclusions, because that's the knee-jerk reaction to anyone making that claim. So as a Christian, I already believed in God, I already believed in prophets, but is Muhammad a prophet? So the following uh, are how I dealt with those things and discovered that in fact, yes, he is a prophet. Number one, if you're going to claim that Muhammad is demon-possessed, then you have some problems with that argument. And they're, I'll break them down into A and B. Now we all read this book called the Qur'an. Generally, people who are not Muslim attribute the Qur'an to Muhammad. We, of course, attribute the Qur'an to God, right? So, what is a mandatory obligation that we all have to do before we even read from this book that came from Muhammad, according to non-Muslims? What do you all have to say before you read from the Qur'an? A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim I seek refuge with the God of Abraham from the devil. So I can't even read the Quran without seeking refuge with the God of Abraham from the devil. Okay, interesting. So what does the Quran say about the devil? It basically says this. That number one, he's an arrogant person who rejects faith in God, 